making this we shot this movie in the tail end of, a, of the pandemic everybody was sort of locked in and and you know we were having these weird experience and dreams at night about mm. you know socializing and all all of that and that you know obviously extended into set you know like adam said we we shot the whole film from cranes so adam was very much alone in set and we had like big 70 foot cranes yeah. sticking into the set. So this little guy was hanging there, moaning, <laughs> crying about the, this, this rigs. Um, no, but anyways, I mean, obviously, yes, the film is about, <laughs> about loneliness, but it's also about disconnection, I think. You know, I, I think they're, they're, these are two separate themes. Um, and that's kind of what I have to say about this. The wires were tough because I am not, my body's not the f most flexible body. Uh, my, the wires hurt me, they dug into me. The stuntmen who would wire me up every day, I would say, ooh, that hurts, and they didn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, but, I, but yo, uh, we did it. We did it as a team. Johan would say, you don't look like you're floating. What are you doing? <laughs> and then uh, I would say, what, what should I do? And then they'd, they'd wire Johan up, and he'd be like, more, more like this. <laughs> but no, that was good. And then talking to Hanush, man, that was always a pleasure. We got deep together. We, I, I felt pain. He helped me try to get out of that pain. Thanks, thanks for that. Yeah, but it was, it was very good. It was a movie about being alone and the tennis ball uh, allowed me to be alone and in, in my in my own world and and uh, Johan set it up with the cameras where the crew was kind of far away and he would, all of a sudden there'd be a camera I'd be like did anyone press uh, record on that thing and I apparently most of the time they did and then we did it we did it. we shot the movie thank you I love the movie I love watching it it's beautiful, the sound's amazing, everybody's great in it, so that's good. And so, of course, if another great movie comes around, maybe Johan will invite us all to do another no, good no, one. No, 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 no. You'll see. That's it. It's, he's so mad. <laughs> all right, guys. All right. Uh, hi, it's a double question to Mr. Adam Sandler. I'm Rodrigo from Correio da Manhã. I'm from Brazil, where 50 First Dates has been shown on television every single day since 2004. Really? So, yeah, every single day. Oh. Dubbed by Alexandre Moreno, the biggest dubber in Brazil. He may, plays your voice. That's nice. Yeah. My yeah. question to yeah. you is, uh, 50 First Dates is a movie about losing control of memory. Yes. Right after you did Click, a movie about losing control of time. What's the relation between memory and time in the story of Jakob? My goodness. <laughs> that was fantastic. First of all, that's great news on Brazil and 51st States. Thank you. I kept wondering, why do I keep getting all these checks from Brazil? <laughs> Thank you, everyone in Brazil. Uh, and and uh, your question was deep, man. I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, this jet lag thing is killing me. While you were saying it, I was going, I have no idea. what I, I, I don't know what's going on right now. I was stuck on the 50, 51st States Brazil, and then I, I lost you. But uh, you said, what the hell was the question again? You said something great. Time and memory, they, they connect and, and everybody knows why. <laughs> no, but, but yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, was the question about Adam's performance? Was yeah. that originally well, what we wanted? Well, I love, I can talk about you, your performances. I, about you. <laughs> I love uh, Carrie's performance, trim, just, just so, wow, watching Carrie work, mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, there was this one scene when she was in the on the phone, right? That we watched uh, Carrie perform. I was in the back, saw her do it, and just in one take, she just broke everybody's heart and, and uh, was so deep in there. She's just the next level of greatness. Um, so it was amazing working with Carrie. Every scene we shot together, and it was the best fun and the easiest person to act with because yeah. he's so truthful and beautiful and soulful but what's what's arresting about him and the spaceship on his own is that it's like some part of his soul has been crushed or it, he looks like she does look like half alive or half mad and I don't know how he did that with his eyes and his face and his 
Borini hates us saying nice things about him. But he's <laughs> no, so I phenomenal. Like I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you. I think it's our responsibility to, to make movies that are not sort of, uh, you know, leaning on the shoulders of other films. Of course, they're part of our journey, but I think part of the idea is to make, make stuff that hasn't been done before, you know, to take our experiences to a place where they haven't been before. I personally do not like the idea of using um, other films as, as a tool for my own filmmaking. And besides, I'm not really a film person anyways. I'm a, I'm a book person, I read, read books. And I think the, 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 you know, the imagery that I you know, create in my head while reading a book is why I'm a filmmaker. I've always been re really vivid about, about that. You know? uh, so, so to me, it's like there's a bunch of great films out there and great science fiction movies in all shapes or forms. But I, you know, I tend to kind of put on a, you know, a blindfold and try to do a film in, in ways that only we can do together, you know, us, the, the, the process of us being together and, and inventing a language that is not sort of resting on, on an existing one, to be honest. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.